see these evaluations and you see these people making this money, et cetera, it came from an understanding of diversifying your portfolio and having patience because it takes time, right? And so how many people can actually do that though? And so it's, it's, it goes back to the mindset though. It's not gonna happen overnight, but I think we have to start thinking a certain way to even head in that direction. Now we're not trying to get to the destination tomorrow, yeah. but we have to turn. Which way, which way is your car life facing? If my car life is, and I, there's no ways app to life, just so you know. You got to feel your way through, take the lumps and bumps, yeah. and learn from it, right? Because there's mistakes. A mistake is not a failure, it's an experience, right? Mm -hmm. A repeated mistake is a failure. Mm -hmm. That's something different. And so we're, we gotta turn that car around. At least, at the very minimum, we have to be going in the right direction. Yeah. Right? No matter how fast or slow you're traveling, yeah. just make sure that car is going in the right direction. That's, that's, that's first and foremost, any, I believe. Any interest in your future in owning your own team? No. <laughs> I'll let LeBron own the team, because if yeah. you own it, I still own it. How <laughs> I like the way you think. I like the way you think. I want to own salary caps. I don't want to own the team. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, look, at the end of the day, um, I don't know where the future is leading. Yeah. Um, I like what I do today, uh, um, and it's, it's, it's early, but I would have to take a pay cut to really own a team, to be honest with you. Really? And I'm not into taking pay cuts right now. Um, <laughs> But you know, it's 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 one of those things where, what do you own a team for? You know, most people buy teams, and 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 does the team actually make money? Maybe maybe not. But most people that buy a team and own a team, they don't need it to make money. Yeah, right. It's an asset. They make the money yeah. around it. Yeah. So whether you buying up, redeveloping the city or things like that, it's the real reason to own the team. Um, but you know, I I think. We have a young core. I don't plan on going. They would want me to buy a team. They would want. They want me out for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but but I don't want to. I don't want to own a team quite yet. And like I said, you know, I have several friends today that's team owners. Yeah. And several friends that's in line to buy teams. You know, it's a lot of young people with a lot of money today. Um, but I, I just like to be the advice. You know, more of the advisor. And, yeah. Uh, perspective because once you own a team you become restricted you see my friend Mike a guy a good friend of mine who uh, bought bought Mitchell and Ness and I'm part of the ownership group now Mitchell and Ness tell you about life going around full circle from selling out the trunk of the car and being <laughs> part of the ownership group is crazy it's a blessing but uh he was an owner he was part owner of the 76ers but he couldn't really do certain things mm -hmm. due to restrictions of being an owner and so he kind of sold his his share and and now he's able to do certain things so i don't i don't think i want to lose my flexibility of entrepreneurial um endeavors that i that i still i'm not because it's, it's you you know it's just the beginning right oh i know oh, okay i know i, I know, I, I, know. I, I didn't know first, you thought it was first couple chapters yeah, yeah first couple chapters yeah you know we were just joking around uh, in the back about uh new balance and how back in the day when we were in elementary school middle school we would get bullied if you wore new balances to they were to wrong school. for doing that i know by the way. i didn't Messed get bullied. It, it, I, I, you know it was just a but, certain thing <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was just me i don't know brother <laughs> no. i don't know um but talk about your partnership with New Balance and, and how you think that's going to change the the shoe game in the business? Uh, well, the partnership with New Balance came out of a, an idea I had for a young man just trying to do the best for him. He didn't want to go to college. He didn't want to go to the G League. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, shit, you know, I got to figure this thing out because he's going to the draft. And the, one of the most important parts of the draft is character evaluating. And so I'm saying to myself, how can I put this young man in a position in which teams could actually call somebody and say, what type of teammate is he? And so, ding, you know, I said, so I called New Balance. I said, hey, I got an idea. I wanted to, I want this young man to do an internship where he can actually learn a business that is pretty authentic to where he's going. 
probably better than learning the obtuse triangle or whatever, right? Um, or a word problem for that matter. Um, and so I was able to do that, and, you know, they did a million dollar internship, and then that transitioned into him having um, a partnership, an endorsement deal with them, and he went to work in Boston at the headquarters, and he worked out on the court before going to work, took lunch, took a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, whatever, worked out, went back to office, worked out after. And he did this all the way until it was time for him to go to the draft. And that was the beginning of NIL. Wow. That expedited the NIL process because he still got drafted in the first round. So that cemented the relationship with myself and New Balance. And then from there, I started to think about executives. Mm. And I started to think about executives looking cool, right? Because executives are starting to get younger and younger and younger. And so I said to myself, I said, um, I have an idea to do a shoe for a CEO where a CEO don't have to feel like he always have to be this like stuffy type of situation. You can still be, you know, corporate but cool. And so, they were like, you're out of your mind. <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculous now, you're getting out of control. So, but I was like, no, I'm, I'm serious. And so, sat on it for about eight months, nothing happened, and then Chris Davis, who, you know, New Balance is a family-owned brand. Chris Davis, who runs the business, um, and his dad owns it, he called me back and was like, hey, you know, we've been thinking about that idea, and uh, I think we want to go through with it. And so, you know, we started designing, and the the, the 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 creative came behind again. Being from Cleveland, we don't have Fifth Avenue, right? We got to go to New York to do, get that. Not we yet. don't have Rodeo, yeah. right? We had to go to LA to get that. So, we always had to dream bigger than our environment, mm -hmm. and so the creative came from that. And I wanted to add a little nostalgia to it because you know, just that whole retro type of feeling. And um, and then obviously I wanted to do the apparel with it. And I wanted to all to be authentic and tell a story and my kids was able to be Good morning. Um, today is uh, November. Is it 20? November 21st, 2022. I'm calling the Municipal Services and Properties Committee uh, to order. Madam Secretary, can you call the roll? Bishop. Here. Mooney. Here. Harrison. Here. Jones. Casey. Present. Moore. Star. Mr. Chairman, you Thank you. Um, the, if the administration can come. Please come to the table. Public Works. Morning, sir. Morning. Good morning, Director. How you doing? To the chair, to the councilman. Is everybody ready for doing well? We're getting there. We are getting there. Busy weekend this weekend. All right, let's start off with uh, ordinance number 1157-2022. By council members Bishop and Griffin, by departmental request, 
This is an emergency ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Works to employ one or more consulting, uh, consultants or one or more firms of consultants to provide professional service necessary to replace the existing fuel system and procure necessary hardware and software for related services to implement the replacement of the system for the Division of Motor Vehicles Maintenance and Department of Public Works. Okay, Director, uh, you want to explain wh what we uh, what we're spending a million dollars for? Good morning to the council, to the chair, to the council. Uh, I have uh, Commissioner Jeff Brown here to uh, explain and also take questions to this particular ordinance. Okay, Commissioner Brown. Good morning uh, to the chair. The uh, this is a upgrade uh, to our current citywide fuel system. Uh, we uh, we currently have a fuel system that services the citywide terminals for the entire entire city fuel system. This is an upgrade. Uh, currently, our current system uh, is operated off of analog phone lines, which do not communicate and aren't supported by uh, the AT&T any longer. So mm -hmm. this will be a cellular-based, um, cloud-based <coughs> system that will take us into the future. OK. So um, when you say analog system, is that the system where we had the rotary dial phone? <laughs> Pretty much, the, yes. OK. Yeah, those are pretty old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The system, the current system is, is well over 25 years old. And okay. The, the technology and the parts uh, software is not supported by the company any longer. So when you say fuel system, can you explain what, is this the fuel distribution of, can you explain that in a little bit more depth? Uh, a absolutely. Uh, throughout the city, we have uh, about 27 fuel sites uh, which dispense f uh, diesel and gasoline for the entire city fleet. Uh, this is for that system. Okay. Um, now, I guess I heard from um, the grapevine that we are um, facing a shortage of diesel fuel. Uh, is the city watching that, or is the city concerned about that? Uh, we are concerned, but uh, all, what we've done since then, so a, a lot of manufacturers have put different vendors on allocation. Uh, what mm -hmm. we have done is uh, we keep our all of our in-ground and above-ground fuel tanks topped off now. So mm -hmm. even if there is a situation where we may get put on allocation, we have enough reserve supply in the ground and above the ground to support the city's fuel fleet. Okay. Okay. All right. I want to open this up to my any questions from my colleagues on ordinance number 1157-2022. Councilman Harrison. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Just a question, because the summary says that a funding source has not been determined uh, for the $1 million. Um, do the chair. Councilman, can you? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. The uh, funding source uh, has not been determined for the, the cost to pay for this uh, system uh, to the chair, to the director of the law department. So will this have to come back to us once the funding source has been determined, or what we are, uh, what we are doing today will uh, allow for the contract to be, um, to go out for the contract and to expend? Through the chair to the councilman, it is my understanding that the funding source has been uh, notif not noted, uh, but I can get that uh, confirmed to you and get that right back to you okay. real quick. All right. Right. Uh, thank you, Councilman Mooney. So, correct. I, it, it says here to be determined. So, if you're saying it is, then that's fine. And so, we can, if we can, uh, I'm just curious to see where this is coming from. Is this out of the current public works budget or is this uh, from a different source uh, to pay for this? So uh, if we can, staff can just make sure that we have that before uh, finance. All right. through, through the chair to the councilman, that's correct. Uh, I will have that sure. updated and, within and an hour. Thank you, Director. And through, lastly, through the chair. And I just asked that because I think for you all, you would want to know that. So that way, if you know, if you have to come back here again or is this all you need to do what you need to do? All right. Through the chair, to the commissioner, thank or you. to the councilman, understood. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councilman Harrison. All right, is there any other questions on Ordinance 1157? All right, seeing no further questions, Ordinance number 1157 is approved. Yep. Ordinance number 1120-2022. By council members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request. This is an emergency ordinance authorizing the Director uh, of Public Works and Finance 
to contract with one or more temporary employment agents to, to provide professional services to supply temporary and seasonal personnel for the Department of Public Works and the Project Clean Program for various departments of the city for a period up to one year. Okay, Director, um, you want to explain? Okay, first in the in the um, in the summary, we had uh, a lot of numbers that I, I just didn't under, quite understand. Um, as far as Project Clean, can you? Um, and, and I don't have I don't have the summary in front of me. All right, Councilman Mooney, did you have any questions yeah. about that? Okay. I, I do. We, we, um, we so talked about this earlier. Yeah, I mean, I looked at legislation, but then within the, the summary, there's two things. One, in, in the 2023 estimate amount, and, and this might be easy, it says including contributions from wards 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 13, and 15. And then it says city council members have their own crews in these wards. What does that mean? Through the chair to the councilman, uh, it is my understanding that on top of the uh, seasonal programming that we do that some council persons put in and have uh, particular ward allocations for uh, some of those things. Uh, and with me being new, I'm not as, as, as familiar with it yet as, uh, as I hope to be, but uh, it's my understanding that some of the council has uh, certain uh, allocations that they've put in uh, to have uh, groups in their wards. With allocations to the city or through their own CDCs are you referring to? From my understanding, uh, through the chair to the councilman, through their own CDCs. Okay, okay, so that has to, that's stuff outside of the city. Okay, I understand that. So then with these, uh, and that may be true, um, their own CDCs, uh, but, but looking at this estimate amount, you have estimates with certain wards at anywhere from um, 38,000 for Ward 2 to 19,000 for Ward 17. What, what are those estimates? And uh, maybe you could explain those numbers. Through the chair to the councilman, I have a, uh, Assistant Commissioner Toy Por Porch here from Park Maintenance. She can help explain sure. some of those. <clears throat> Good morning. So from different wards, they allocate different people. So some people have a two ward, two crew ward, and some people have one crew. So while some people have two park aides and one supervisor, other ones have three and one supervisor. So that number is based off of what they probably previously did. So that, okay, so if I interrupt you. So that number is based upon whatever project clean funds <laughs> that council person has allocated for their crew. And like I know with, with my crews in the past, I've had choices of how many people I want to fund. So you're basing those numbers based upon what the ward has funded in the past. Is that right? To the councilman, yes. Okay. So in other words, this list, wards two through seventeen, you know, through the list, those are those are the ones that use Project Clean currently. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. I didn't I didn't realize. Uh, is, is just if I get, Casey, is that true? Do you? Yeah, I don't know that these wards use Project Clean. That's what's confusing to me. So through chair to, to the councilman. Um, so for example, I think wards 16 and 17, they split. They go one and one. And um, if they were on that list, I haven't had a chance to look through that all the way. But if they're on that list, then at some point in time, they were in the in the program. Oh, some, some point, point in time, the past few they years. They had to be in the program. That doesn't mean necessarily that they're going to do it this year, but sometime in the past, there's been an allocation for that. That's a historical Correct. number. Correct. Okay, that's a historical number. Now, I'm looking here, too. There's two types of funding, general funding and CDBG funding for this. Is that right? Correct. Okay, so when it comes time to Project Clean, council people could pay in CDBG num monies, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they yeah, in, in the past, we were told we couldn't do that by, uh, not by anybody here, but by uh, Cox. I'm like, oh. Sure. Yeah. By Cox. Because I don't think he wanted no. to deal with it. But you're saying this coming year, council members, if they want Project Clean, they'll be able to pay with, pay with CDBG money? They should be able to. Yes. Well, yes. they will be able they should to. Be able. Uh, council Chair, too, the councilman, there are several pots of money that you could use. You could use general fund, it, depending on how your, uh, your person does it. You can use CDBG, and in the past, they've used casino funds. So, right. I just know in the past, I was told I couldn't use CDBG. Yeah, you can, you, you can. it's definitely on the table to be used. It's okay. just that some council folks have used it and some okay. have not. Thank you. 
Sure. Okay. So okay. So I see that. So essentially, this is a contract with this agency just to supply personnel to do this, and then uh, the months. Is it? Do we know what months this is going to cover? Usually, it covers from. March, we like to bring them in as early as we can once everything gets in place to like November. But I know this year it wasn't that way. They, they, and I understand there's problems getting people hired, but it was later. They were supposed to stay till November, mm -hmm. and then suddenly one day they, it just ended. Because like, mm -hmm. I called for my, my crew, and they said they've been just got noticed today. Like it was just suddenly ended. I, I guess the money must have ran out or something. Correct. It did. Which I understand. Correct. It's an estimate. Correct. Okay. Um, no, I, I think no further questions. Thanks for taking your time, all three of you. Okay, thanks, Councilman Mooney. Um, so to follow up on, on the Councilman's uh, question, so uh, Anirya says uh, including contributions from wards 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, and 8, 13, and 15. So the ones, my ward is listed up top. I, I, commit, I committed $38,000. So I do have a contribution there. So, so so I'm not listed below. So these are everybody in, in its totality, right? Yes. Yeah, so again, this, this is an estimate uh, count to the council uh, chair. This is an estimate that we use for the purpose of legislation. That number could be larger, it could be smaller. Some of those uh, wards can be on, some of them can drop off. But again, it's an estimate just to give you an idea of what it's looked like in the past, what it could look like. Again, that number could change over time. OK. OK. All right, is there any other questions? Yeah. Councilman uh, Brian Mooney. I mean, Councilman Brian Casey. I'm thank, sorry. thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I, I knew what you meant, but I was just waiting. Um, Mr. Chairman, to the to the director, um, how much will the temporary agency cost us? I'll defer to uh, Assistant Director Lair. Uh to the uh, Council Chair, to the Councilman. The agency could cost us anywhere from um, historically. I think last year was about four million. Uh, it can be more than that, depending on what happens with prices, what uh, the new contract comes in at, if it's higher or lower. What's the total cost of this that you're asking for? Um, what is that? And again, our ask is an, is an estimate, because that number does fluctuate. And that number, um, again, it fluctuates based on the pots of money we get. If council, if wards jump in and say, hey, we want a crew as well, that number could go up. If wards come out and say, hey, no, we don't want a crew, that number could go down. All right, Mr. Mr. Chairman, to the assistant, assist, assistant commissioner or director? Director. Assistant director. So you're asking for 4.9 million, 4 million of that which will go to whatever temporary agency that you're going to contract with, correct? And then historically, you've always called the council members looking for bodies. Because I know last year uh, in Ward 16 and 17, which by the way, we can't use CDBG numbers because we don't have the appropriate um, income levels, in income levels th to be able to, to use this, right? And then we didn't have a crew for more than half the year and we're struggling. We're struggling because we can't find bodies, correct? So the question is, is that if the council is paying for this, and we'll just say that Ward 16 and 17 paid 38,483 combined, but yet we didn't get that out of, uh, we didn't get that amount out of the work that was provided because I'll be honest with you, I saw zero crew in Ward 16 last year, and I don't want to speak for Ward 17, but I don't know how much addition is there. Does that money that we're allocating for you through the council, does that money come back if it's, if it's not used within the allotted time? The council chair, to the councilman, yes, it does. It'll get rolled over. So if that money- I didn't ask if it was getting rolled over. Mm -hmm. I asked if it was coming back. So as far as it going back, that would be up to your planner. Typically, when I work with your planners, they figure out what happens with that. We don't spend it. I'll, I'll give it to you that way. Who are our planners? Uh, the chairman, the um, assistant well, director. Well, I don't know who it is today, but I used to work with John James. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know who it is today. Okay. But those are the folks that will say, well, you've got this amount. And I, well, we typically, uh, the assistant commissioner, I deal with them constantly about what's left over, what's there, 
what needs to happen. If it doesn't get spent, it'll sit there and we'll, we'll decertify it. Rolls goes back into a pot and they make decisions on what they want to do with it on the following. All right, and Mr. Chairman, to the director, um, what is the rules and responsibility of the project clean? Explain to us what project clean is. Thank you. Um, from to the chair to the council, just want to make sure I'm answering your question correctly when you say what are the rules and responsibilities of the crews that will do the work. So or? what? So I decide to allocate dollars for project clean, which I've done in the past, right? But we, I, please explain to the council, Mr. Chairman, to the to the director what Project Clean is, how long they're supposed to be staying in the wards, what their roles and responsibilities are, what's the work that's supposed to be being done. So I'll, I'll, I'll take the first part, but Assistant Commissioner, I'll let you handle what the crews actually do. But as far as Project Clean goes, as you know, it's, it's federal dollars that are allocated for this program. We use that money for, uh, if a crew, a, a council person says, hey, I want to have a specialized crew in my area, and those folks are working in that ward, they're doing work in that ward as it's assigned through. We'll get something from the council person. They'll say, hey, I want this, 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 and done. We'll assign that to that crew. Now, as far as how long they stay on, it's all based on resources, all, as the program year, those kind of things. But I, can, I don't know if that answers the question or not, but. I'll, I'll, I'll follow up. So typically what the project clean people do, they're on the trim crews. So our cuttings, our drivers, and the Park maintenance aides and the seasonal supervisors are part of this trim crew where they cut, trim, and um, come after the cut. They clean the lots. Okay, so this is Mr. Chairman to, to the director, assistant director, commissioner, <laughs> whomever can answer this. Are they supposed to be just be cutting vacant lots or is it abandoned homes or is it for seniors? Is it for the disabled? I mean, can, can a council person just call up and say, listen, I've got an elderly folks who need their 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 yard cut or is this something that people have to get in lists or is it just for our parks no they're they're not in vacant, parks, they're in vacant lots. lots but unfortunately the cause to call us and say send my crew over there no because we're on a cycle and we're on a system so they get their work distributed to distributed to them in the morning so they're already on a cycle mm -hmm. it, okay they're, they're already on a work plan it, to the councilman it's specifically for vacant properties and okay. vacant lots that's that's what i'm that's, that's what that's, i'm getting at. That's what so it's for. for vacant lots vacant properties correct yes as long as there's no like as long as there's no utilities on correct correct um and then would it be for illegal dumping if somebody's dump, we'll say somebody dumped a bunch of tires in an alley or something like that? Can this if project it, clean crew be called and put on the rotation to go clean that up? To the councilman, if it is a vacant, if it is considered a vacant property, not a right of way per se, but a vacant property, then it, depending on the type of dollars you're using, if, if you're using community block grant funds, that's uh, supposed to be specifically for vacant properties. So if you've got tires in a in an alley, your crew may not be able to do that because of the type of dollars they're using. Okay, and then what, Mr. Chairman, to the to, to our panel here, what if they're using casino funds, or if they're using another source not CDBG, would they be able to clean up the right of way? I would say they should be able to, but okay. I do know when you speak of dumping, we have a crew for that, so they wouldn't be doing that. Right, but yeah, but. Using your crew mm -hmm. could be the difference between dumping sitting there for a day mm -hmm. or two weeks, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we know that there's a problem with illegal dumping, and mm -hmm. we know that the city can't keep up with all of the illegal dumping that's yeah. going on. But if you had a specific crew assigned to your ward, and there's illegal dumping, and you're using the right appropriations, that should be able to be completed relatively So it, it will also depend on what type of vehicle that they're using. So for the day, if I send you out with a small, smaller truck, you, you can't pick up dumping. So oh, that's right. why they already, you know, assign their work in the morning. So with all these wards, the different wards that are being used, do these crews, Mr. Chairman, to, to, the, uh, to the commissioner, do, they, do these crews report to a certain spot or do they just, I mean, how do you designate then who, what ward gets what vehicle or, or what? No, the, the, war, the vehicles come out of the stations. Right. So it's not a designated vehicle for a designated ward. So, for example, up in Ward 16 to 17, these, this crew would report to the Lorraine Garage, mm -hmm. right, and then get their assignment from the Lorraine Garage and then have at it for the day. Is that basically mm -hmm. it? Okay. Correct. 
All right, no other questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, uh, Councilman Casey. Uh, just to follow up on the um, uh, question that Councilman Casey had, and you mentioned um, the city is on a cycle. Mm -hmm. So if we have assigned crews to, let's say, to each an individual ward, does the cycle really matter? Because they are relegated to work in our ward. So the cycle really doesn't matter. Is that correct? Or is that, uh, am I getting that wrong? Well, we have a cycle in, in total. We have a cycle throughout our whole division, but for that particular <coughs> station and those particular wards, then they have a they have working assignments that really comes into the seven week cycle that we have. So I don't know if that answers your question, but they so, go with the with the program of the station. <laughs> so what, what I'm asking you is that um, when you're in a cycle, when we in our seven week cycle, mm -hmm. if, say we're in the middle of our cycle and ward two doesn't get service for another two or three weeks in the cycle. Mm -hmm. Will my crews be working in my ward the entire time? They're, yes. Because because yes. you when, when you yes. when you said it before you were saying they work on a cycle. Yes. So but your cycle will be in your ward. Your crew will stay in your ward. The okay. Crew that you fund will stay in your. In my ward, ward. Yes. it's just the tr tractor crews are on a cycle. Yes. Not the weed eater crews. No, they're on the same cycle. They should be coming right up after. Well, yeah. So surely it's not right after, but mm -hmm. you know they should be coming right right behind in essence so to the to the council chair just your crew always stays in your ward they don't go out to another ward but when we say staying within your cycle we try our best to keep them moving in a rotation and there have been times when uh, maybe there's a hot one that comes in they'll come out of that to do what needs to be done so just so you know that they do stay in your wards they don't move outside of your wards and when we talk about a cycle even within those wards we try to keep that so um to the assistant director, so if the crew, if the tractor crews are not in my ward, and the weed eater crews follow behind the tractor crews, mm -hmm. they are working independently in my ward that particular week because the tractor crews are, are in, say, like ward one. So the tractor crews again are city people, city folks, city staff, not Snyder Blake folks. When you talk about tractors, those are in city of Cleveland employees. Which Chairman, we keep I can't them. hear the distinguished gentleman. Sorry, the tractor crews are city employees. They're not temporary. They're not through our contract. So those folks are definitely working through the cycle. They're not specifically assigned to a ward. They're assigned to the entire city. Right. Snyder Blake crews are the temporary resources or the crews that you have. Those are strictly out of that contract. They will be working within your ward. So we want to make sure we have to keep the difference between the folks who are working in the cycle versus your specific crews. Right. Okay. That's what I, that's what I'm trying to understand is that heck if 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 the cycle is in ward four or ward uh, whatever ward and not in my ward. I don't want my weed eater crews following behind no, the tractor crews that's, in, that's, that's working on the yeah, cycle. No, your, your crew would be in your ward. Okay, all right, okay. All right, I'm gonna go to Councilman uh, Anthony Harris. Can you put me on the list, Mr. Chair? Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, chair, uh, through the chair to the director. I'll tell you that I, the program has worked for me. <laughs> the, the program, the setup has worked for me in War 10. Uh, you know, maybe because I had a good unit leader over there, Mike Ingram, who, uh, who made sure that he uh, took care of business. Uh, but again, the program worked well for me, ha have no issues. Everyth again, everything is not perfect, right? But my experience has been a good experience when there has been issues that have come up outside of that seven week cycle that the war crew is also participating in with the other crews so that way they can get through uh, the properties. If there has been an issue through the chair to the director and, and the team here, I have sent the email or called up the commissioner or assistant commissioner or the um, administrative manager, uh, Todd, Tamisha, uh, Commissioner Scott, and I know I'm missing somebody. And they have, as the assistant director indicated, will come out the, the cycle and take care of that if it is a problem that has come up. Um, so, you know, I, I do appreciate that uh, flexibility of the uh, crews in the department to say, hey, if something come up, we'll go ahead and take care of it, uh, and then we'll get back into our rotation. Um, the dumping side through the chair to the uh, team here, uh, my experience has been if they're, the crews stumble upon dumping, they call in for a packer or uh, I, don't, I, I don't recall what the, the crew 
the, the larger dumping uh, folks are. But however, they'll put a call in because I've actually been driving down St. Clair and I see, a, I see someone scratching their head and shaking their head and I look over and there's the War 10 crew, right? And it's because they got to a vacant lot and somebody done put a whole house in the, in the, in the middle of it, right? And so I'm talking to them, they're like, yeah, we're on the phone just calling to get you know, the uh, schedule for it to be, come back and be picked up. They don't necessarily have that because that's not what this program is. They are not there to do illegal dumping or to do, uh, you know, other services, you know, which I understood that after because I also had questions early on of, okay, are they doing all of these aspects? But they are, they are simply doing cutting and, and trimming and, and property and lots. And so uh, I will say that each time that they have called those in, Packer has been there like either, either immediately or within a day or two have picked all the things up. So uh, I just give you all, your department, uh, kudos for the work that you've done, at least on the northeast side uh, out of the Humphrey Station, you know, with the work over there. Again, nothing is perfect. You know, we've had our, 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 our hiccups at times, but overall, you know, I can't complain. But I will say, uh, as my colleagues mentioned, it seemed to have been very, very tough to get people this past year uh, from this Snyder Blake uh, company. So do the chair to the team, have we explored other uh, individuals or agencies who can provide the resources that we think can really give us, you know, more bodies that we are looking for? Do the chair. Through the chair to the councilman, uh, we are currently working and looking at all aspects for staffing. And one of the things that we're looking at this year is being a bit more aggressive in the high schools uh, to uh, grab staffing in that, in that manner as well. Uh, but also looking at those competitors of Snyder Blake and looking at uh, other ways, being creative about finding staffing as it is, as you know, it's a issue across the country right now. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, I appreciate that. You know, it's, it's I get it, and and again, I didn't know whether it was an issue with Snyder Blake themselves and not doing what they need to do to find the people, or is it just, you know, we caught up in the same maze as everybody else. Hey, folks just don't want to work, or, you know, whatever the case is. So, uh, again, I appreciate, uh, through the chair, to the department, your efforts and your work uh, from the Humphrey Station, and I'm, I'm hoping my main man will be back this summer, because, you know, I'm used to, I'm used to a certain style. You know, he, he, he gets it done. You know, I know, I'm, you know I, I know he may not be there now, but, you know, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that he will be back, okay? Because he, he gets it done. I don't know these, these new folks who are there. I haven't met them yet. You're going to have to introduce you to the okay. new Okay, all right, all right. I, well, I'll be, I'll be ready to, to be introduced, all right? Thank you all. Through the chair to the councilman, one of the things that we are trying to do is finding those good staff members and taking them and replicating what they do across the entire city. <laughs> All right, thank you, Councilman uh, Harrison. Uh, Councilman Joe Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Snyder Blake, um, I, I want to start out where my um, colleague left off about that company. Um, how long have they had this contract? Uh, to, the, for, to the chair, to the Councilman, uh, it's probably been a, more than 10 years that yeah. they've had this contract. And through that space and time, we haven't had any other competitors that was interested uh, in, or how, how, do, how does this process work? Do we go out in the market space? And one of the reasons why I'm asking this question, Mr. Chairman, is because I'm seeing a trend here in City Hall. It appears like certain contractors constantly get all the work. And there's the diversity that used to exist here in City Hall, unfortunately, doesn't exist anymore. So if the director, or or the assistant directors could tell me a little bit more about this. How did this, why are we stuck 10 years with the same contractor? Uh, to the chair, to the councilman, uh, it is, I, I, just from my experience, I can say that we've had other people who have bid on this, who have actually, we, we send it out, we probably send it out to about 20 or so agencies. And whether it's, some agencies don't want to take, touch this type of work because of the whole workers' comp thing that's behind it. Uh, some agencies, uh, they price out. Um, so Snyder Blake has found a way to offer a price that is less than most of the others. Uh, the, the one or two times that we, there was one time, probably more than 10 years ago, that we had two. We had another organization, it was a nonprofit organization. But even they weren't able to handle the work. 
Uh, we had another organization we used to work with uh, even before that. She did a great job, but she ended up going out of business because of the workers' comp. So there's a lot of pieces that go with doing this type of work that a lot of agencies don't want to touch. So Snyder Blake has workers' compensation or it doesn't? Well, they, uh, I, I don't, again, I, won't, I don't know how they make the hot dog. I could, I'll just tell you that the hot dog is there as far as so how So you are works. requiring workers' compensation? Yes, that is required. I see. And so this contract, they've had it for 10 years. Can you provide to the council the listing of the other contractors uh, that you have went out to? Um, and let me ask this question. Does, does this come out of your department or does it come out of, uh, of, of another department that seeks these services? Uh, there are several departments that use this contract. Um, is, that what, is that your question? No, no, no. Like, say, there's, there's always in, like, different, oper I know in our operation, there's a central operation. So whatever the department's needs or what their wants are, or if they need to get contracts, it all goes through a purchasing or a department that deals with uh, going out on the field and making sure there's, there's competitive processes in play. Mm -hmm. So does it come out of your department in terms of the director's department, or does it come from, from somewhere else? Who makes uh, those decisions? To the chair, to the councilman, it does come out of the director's office. Traditionally, that's where it's come out of, the director of public works office. And it has always been that, at least for the last 10 years? At least for the last 10 years. Mr. Chairman, you know, I would um, ask, you know, how does the flow of business in City Hall works? Because that's interesting um, to see that one department can control, um, you know, uh, how that works. It should be some kind of independent process in place uh, so that you can ensure that there's competitiveness uh, in the market space. And right now, uh, we're relying on one department to make those decisions. And I'll tell you, I wish I could say the same thing Anthony Harrison is saying at the other end of the table. And, and before COVID, we were having problems. So there wasn't an issue of, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, COVID, and then all of a sudden we have an employment scenario. Uh, we've had problems, and I've uh, talked to the director about this, uh, where before I sat at this table and I go, I, I, I fast forward behind in time, council never had to pay for um, independent operatives to just to do their wards. The city always took care of the neighborhoods as it relates to vacant lots. And I know that over time, we've lost a lot of funding uh, in other areas that the council used to have. And so the little funds we do have, uh, we're helping your departments do your work. And so for me, Mr. Chairman, I just think that that's, you know, given the fact that we have more flush money coming in the city than we've ever had in the history of this city from where I sit. And, um, and not to see these departments up and running and functioning in a way in which you're taking care of those needs and servicing the neighborhoods. Um, I think we need to get back to, um, you know, we're legislators. We're not into the business of hiring people. Uh, we should not be into that business of trying to run cruises in our respective territories. The city has a responsibility to do that. And I think the city should do that. And I don't, unless there's a disagreement now, what I've said here on this side of the table, Mr. Chairman, and my arguments have consistently been, how much money do you need to get to take care of what you need to take care of? And so the issue is if this, Mr. Chairman, $4.9 million estimated amount for this funding cycle is not enough, then where do, how do we take that? Where, where do we go with that? And how do we change the system up? so that we're not sitting here you know, another four or five years with Snyder and Blake. Through the councilman to the chair, uh, through the chairman to the councilman, sorry. Uh, first thing I would mention is that all uh, RFPs and all contracts are vetted through the same uh, methodology that uh, any of them are. They're not specific or different because they come through the director's office. So they still have to go through OELs, they still go through law and through the various uh, uh, parameters that they are uh, meant to make sure that everything is on the up and up for those uh, contracts. Uh, the second thing I would mention is that uh, with me being a bit new, I am assessing those items that you mentioned. And uh, for me, I look at it from a place of as long as I have the resources, we can get the work done. Uh, I have not, uh, as, as 
adept as where the funding is exactly comes from. My job is typically to get the work uh, completed, uh, and that's what I focus on. But I will get a bit more in tune into where those fundings come from and make sure that we're assessing them from the right place to make sure that we get equitable work throughout the city done, uh, regardless of where the funding comes from. And, and Mr. Chairman, when we talked about ARPA funds, and again, um, if, if we're going to uh, use those funds, are we using any of those funding sources to be able to strengthen your department right now as it relates to trailers, trucks, uh, equipment, <coughs> lawnmowers, riding lawnmowers, deck mowers, <coughs> whatever it takes to be able to get that? Did, did we, because I know that we had allocated some of those funds, but I'm not sure if it's going here in this department. Through, through the chair to the councilman, as of right now, we are, uh, I am actually doing an assessment right now and making a recommendation for the use of ARPA funds for uh, my department, but we are, that's ongoing right now. Right, and so I think that's critical, Mr. Chairman, because, you know, I've never been to the Humphrey Station. How many stations, Mr. Chairman, do you have? Two. Six. And Mr. Chairman, I'd like to go to all six stations. Can I get a ride along? I've only went to the one that's on 93rd Street, and, um, and I've been there probably about 25 times. Um, and the reason, Mr. Chairman, I was there is because my citizens are constantly on top of me about these vacant lots every year. And um, it has caused me a great deal of consternation and um, stress. Um, and um, I mean, and stress on top of stress, um, because there's a number of issues that happen. Either our cruises don't make it to cut some lots, or they come in and they cut some of the area, but they miss some. Then we're we're on the phone, or the neighbors hear that you see them cutting one side of the street, and then two weeks later they they didn't cut that lot next to their home, <coughs> or we have situations, Mr. <coughs> Chairman, where. Um, um, the lots have been cut um, to the director and they've left a really bad job, you know, where they got left all the grass in the street, grass on the sidewalks. It looks really bad. It's like it was already bad, but you made it even worse. Uh, and they don't even pick up the grass and the debris. And in some instances, they leave the debris consistently in those lots. Um, so. We, we've had a lot of problems over the years. I don't want to hash them all out here at this table, um, but what I would like to do is see who I can work with um, so that we can tighten up the operation over in the Lee Harbor War One area. Uh, most of our citizens, Mr. Chairman, feel like we're the forgotten neighborhood. You know, we're the ones that pretty much paid our taxes, you know, did everything we need to do, and then somehow the city, oh, you, your folks, you're okay over there. You cut your grass, you're okay. We're gonna go to the areas that are the most needed. And then we don't get those same kind of services like we should get over there. So um, with that being said, um, if we could make it a, a priority uh, to do some of those things uh, and then maybe sit down and talk about who, who's who over there so that I could work with you, um, uh, Director, it would be great. And I have just this one piece here, DeForest and Lee Road. It's a vacant property, um, and it has, uh, there's two things going on with it right now. Um, the, the fellow died who owns the property. It's a vacant gas station. I brought it to the department's attention several times. And here's another problem that is, is a problem for me in my neighborhood, is that on our main streets, we should be able to get to them a little bit quicker and faster than maybe some of the other areas that's not in your main, in, on those main streets. Like, I only have like three roads that are like main strips. That's Lee Road, Harvard, and Miles. That's it. And then Kinsman. Um, so of those roads, we should be able to get to those issues. It's not a lot of issues oftentimes, but when we do have issues like DeForest and Lee Road, where I've been putting this request in, and now a lot of the ministers are upset at the fact that they've had a big event at one of the churches, and this situation I, I was talking about, the illegal dumping on the, on the, on the gas station, Clark gas station, mm -hmm. the, the pumps are exposed. Uh, there's all sorts of hazard issues. I brought it to um, the fire department chief, uh, the new chief who's in. Um, so we have issues here, and I need your help to help me clean that up and, and get that right. Um, and then on top of that, if you have anyone who's investigative, we have cameras over in that area from the police department. We do have citizens who have snapshot 
uh, photos of people doing illegal dumping. So I would need to work with your department to get that done. But the point to be made is that on our main streets, if you can help me quiet that and keep that clean, I would be very appreciative, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, to the director. Through the chair, to the, uh, to the councilman, we have uh, already instituted this year, uh, hopefully you've seen some uh, relief in that area. We have started a Maine's first approach to our uh, vacant lot approach. And what we do is, we, is before we break into the neighborhood, we do the main uh, drags first and, and address those vacant properties and lots uh, first before going into uh, the neighborhoods. Hopefully you'll see some uh, a better showing next season, but we did uh, uh, change our approach uh, this season in that regard. So will you be able to take care of DeForest and Lee Road? Absolutely. Okay. DeForest and, who, and Lee Road. who's running, and that's the Clark gas station, mm -hmm. and who's running the Maine's First program? The Maine's First program has uh, been instituted inside and implemented inside of the uh, cycle program. So instead of going uh, just directly into the subsection, what they do is actually hit the main street in that subsection first. Yeah, but who's running it? It's, it, it's run by the same folk that run the vacant uh, properties and vacant lots program. Person that's over so I can call them because I don't need to call you all the time, Director. Uh, I, need to I be believe to, you already I, communicated I need to, to, to me, I need sure. to be able to call somebody that I can get on and, and, and stay on top of them because you're busy all the time. Yes. It's, it's still the same person, Tamisha Chris, Chris, so, I can't reach her. Okay. So who do I reach? Because I didn't call Tamisha a number of times. She still ain't returned my phone call. You talking about Tamisha Christian, right? No, Christian. Tamisha Christmas. To the chair. Can I reach you? You, you, you sitting you, here, you, you, you always be, you seem do. like you're going to take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> right. You always do, okay. Councilman. Right. Um, you, you, I think everybody has talked to you over there. Tamisha Crisman um, is over Ward 1 and Michael Ingram. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, said, Councilman. I'm sorry. You said who? Michael who? Uh, Michael Ingram. Is that the one that was good in your yes. neighborhood? Well, I'm going to go talk to Michael. Mm. I'm, no, no, we ain't. I'm going to keep him. If he that good and then work your miracles over there, what's his name? Michael Ingram? Michael Ingram. But um, if you, if you want to start, you can, call, you can contact me. And can, I'm, you, are you, are you, can you hand you, me your do card? You, do you get through I'm, to the... I, um, to I'm the commissioner, Scott? I talk to Scott all the time. He oh. takes care of business. Oh, what? Um, but I'm, I don't talk to you, though. Well, Co Commissioner Scott is the guy. Well, okay, I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> Scott ain't doing the Main Street, is he? C Councilman, everything, listen, we want to make sure everything goes through the chair. Mr. Okay? Mr. Chairman, so Scott takes care of the Main Street now? Scott is the commissioner of the entire division. Okay, great. All right, Councilman Jones, you got any further questions? No, Mr. Chairman, appreciate you. I'm happy over here. I got, um, okay. I got uh, Anthony Harrison's guy. All right, okay, Councilman Jones. All right, Councilwoman uh, Rebecca Morgan. <laughs> hey, good morning. I'm, I'll be brief because uh, I know we, it's almost Thanksgiving. No one's even, no. I, we're so close, you guys. We're very close. Um, I, so this is uh, like a few people on this committee. This is my first year on council. Um, and I just, first of all, want to just give a huge thanks to you. I remember, I think I called you. I was walking the ward. I remember I was on like Willowdale and the grass was starting to grow. And I call, I just like was finding on my phone and I was like, what a, I paid for this crew. When's this crew coming out? And you talked me through the entire thing. So I wanted to say thank you. Yes, thank you. A absolutely. And, um, you know, Tamisha, um, John Campbell, when he was doing the illegal dumping this summer, uh, folks were just really helpful and responsive so I just wanted to say thank you and to director Williams for um, you know keeping keeping the city moving this summer um, because this is my first year and this was also the first year that Ward 12 paid for a project clean crew um, I am essentially trying to figure out was that worth my money you know was that uh, what did I what did we get out of it because I, I remember that when we spoke one of the things I learned was that if you know I don't essentially fill give them tasks in the ward you have a lot of work to do, so you might send them out to to on the normal cycle, right? Um, so, and one of the things I remember we talked about was that if we didn't utilize the crews, you know, well then we wouldn't be charged for that money. So, is there a way for us to get essentially like an accounting of what the ward crews did through Project Clean through the chair to the to the panel? Yes, 
Um, we always have a balance and we always know where we're at with the funding. I don't want it to, I don't know if, um, if, if anybody is confusing that just because you have a war crew doesn't mean we're not sending other crews in that war to finish yeah. up your war. Yeah. So while we're going through the cycle, there's other, when we get to that area that your crew may be in, we bring other crews in to help along so we can get through the war. So I think that it's worth it um, because you always have a crew in your section. And then when we have the other, when we get to your section as the other crews, they come in and help them along. And then they fly on through and go to the next ones. But meanwhile, your crew remains in your ward. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I, I would love to see that accounting because I, I, I think one of the things I struggled with this year was that I was sort of always trying to feel out with Commissioner Scott, is this something that the crew can do? You know, we would have fleet looking in tough shape and it was midway through the cycle, so they weren't coming back out to fleet for a number of weeks. And it was like, well, the crews don't do that. Um, and so... I, there were a lot of times I tried to send something to Project Clean and it wasn't actually a Project Clean task. And I understand that you can't, you know, you know, I'm learning as I go, but I would love that accounting so that I could understand what those crews did in the ward that the normal crews cycling through wouldn't have done. Who the chair to the councilman, what, when you say accounting, do you mean money or work? I think both, like how much, what, what work orders did they do oh, okay. and sort of how much did that did that draw down on? Because I know you worked through your balance. I'm not actually sure if I worked through my balance and worked so the well. balance. So the money's okay. yeah, the money only goes is based off their rate and with the with the um, how many hours they come to work. It has nothing to do with what they do at work. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I guess I don't even know if you know because I, I could only send them so many tasks. Mm -hmm what they did in the ward the weeks that I wasn't sending them stuff. So that, that's what I'm trying to that's, figure that's out. That's easy. So, we, yeah. we produce a daily, uh, a daily assignment sheet every day that they send to my office. And so I know what the crews are doing every day, and I know where they're at. Um, we also send a, um, a daily award progression report to... I think all of you, right? Yeah, we get the charts about yes. where folks are going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I use that. I have my map of my subsections. People <laughs> would call me angry, and I'd be like, your subsection's coming up next week. You know, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> um, so I would, I would appreciate that, because honestly, I'm even deciding. I think I paid for a three-man crew this year. Yes. Should I do a two-man crew? I know this is also a, a question of how we fund this program. So I would, for my first year, I would just really appreciate that to help me understand it better. I appreciate you asking for that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you. Those are all my questions. All right, thank you, Councilwoman. Um, Councilman uh, Brian Mooney. Yeah, just briefly. Briefly, I mean, I love this. I love my Project Clean crew. It's the best thing I did on Council. If you see, I, I, you know, the money appropriated there, I would have them all year if I could. I mean, I love them. I work with them closely. I got to tell you, all the people there, Tabisha, Ty Alexander, I started living with you. I can't always get them on the phone, but, but that's because they're busy. So I, emails, that's how I communicate was 98% emails. And I'd get instant responses sometimes or within there. They just, it's just phone's not always the best way to communicate, especially if they're busy. But, you know, I, I, you know for instance, they, my ward, it's, it's great because I do still have my CDC working on some of this, but I can pair it here with Project Clean to get more done. And it's well worth the money. And when they're not, you know, I would send over, I, I have a pretty good idea of now what they do. It's vacant lots, vacant structures, uh, homes in foreclosure, things like that. And, and, and there are other little things you can have them do, but they can't do big lots because they don't have a tractor. That, that's not what they're there for. So like in my ward, initially they were doing parks at the beginning. And I talked to them, they said, oh, we thought you'd want your parks to look extra good. And that's good. I said, well, yeah, but... I'm getting calls about these vacant lots. So, you know, I don't care if my, my parks are extra good. Please pay attention to this. And they did that, and they were responsive. So I, I didn't give them stuff every day because, you know, but I would pop up, try to give them one or two or three, and, and it was always done within a matter of a few days, depending on how busy they were and rain and everything. And I wanted a three-man crew, but I think they said they could only really realistically staff a two-man crew this year. And then, you know, we don't lose the money. Because, you know, I've talked to John James and Tony Tell. There's, they only utilize, even if you appropriate uh, to a point, so you could have money left over. And it's not worth decertifying because you can just use that balance for the next year. So, um, you know, I, I, I thought it was great. I would go, always go meet my guys at least once. And I, I think it's the best thing, uh, the best thing that the city offers. 
I wish we didn't have to pay for it extra, but we do. So that's all I have to say. All right, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Councilman uh, Joe Jones. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, certainly looking at this contract that we have right here, right now in front of us, so we can add an extra crew on if we needed it to this existing contract the way it's written up. Uh, to, to, to the, through the chair to the councilman, you can add a crew anytime we have this contract available. So if you have the resources to do it and you want to, yes, as long as we have this contract in place, you can. I see. And, and then also, um, you know, when, when I started on my program, <coughs> you know, I had, you know, I got you director, so I appreciate you. But the previous director, I didn't have a good relationship. He was always involved with the politics in my neighborhood. And so that's probably one of the reasons why I got the issues I got. Every time there was running for public office, he was always on the other side of the fence and helping in those campaigns. So it would probably be good for the administration not to have its employees working uh, in the field campaigning against members of council. And so that that was some of my problems. So because it was just, I don't want people to think that this was just a scenario. You wasn't giving me the services from my neighborhood. And that's what it basically boiled down to. And, um, and it wasn't a priority. And so um, I would hope that the Bibbs administration won't have its directors and commissioners out involved in the political processes of elected officials running for public office. So well, I think, I think Mr. Councilman, I think that's, um, uh, that's not proper anyway. Well, I mean, that's already, in the, that's already written in Well, stone. you know, it, it, it happened. So if okay. you need photographs, I'll okay. get it for you. Okay. All right, so now the issue is um, that I just wanted to put that out there because we're still having a residual impact on that. And I don't know if it's a part of that in itself or just the efficiency. I believe it's more or less uh, you guys are shaping that up. I'm glad to see that you got uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Michael coming over to help with that process. And then, Mr. Chairman, to the director, are we going to do something different with the program, or, or this is how we're going to roll it out this year? Are we looking to try to maybe look at splitting it up a little bit like we initially had conversations on the table about? To the chair, to the councilman, yes. Uh, the, when we were at the table a few weeks ago and talking about the uh, particular uh, items that we were exploring, those are still on the table. We're still moving those forward. Okay. And so, Mr. Chairman, I think that, you know, looking at how we, we get, because see what's important is <clears throat> having competitive contracts, making sure that, that we get a program that's up and that's functioning and working correctly so all council members can get served correctly. And I know that there's a lot of uh, vacant lots on the east side than there are on the west side. And I know that, that, you know, for my West Side friends, I wish I didn't have so many vacant lots. And I would have a crew doing all sorts of things differently. Um, and it's good to note that um, um, you do have a listing of uh, an accountability system in place for your cruises that you can account for where they are and what they were doing. And, um, and I discontinued Mr. Chairman, my crew, was because after speaking with them, they hadn't done nothing but three grass cuts in three months. And so I didn't think that they were working uh, like they should have. Uh, I was uh, floored by it, and then that, after that year, that second year, I, I, I never put anything into the program. And, and I, I came by knowing this by talking to them themselves. Um, and so it's good to see that you do now have a tracking system that's in place that's going to follow what they do and where they are and what's going on. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to clear the floor because okay. I don't want you to think that over on this side of the table, I'm just uh, – uh, upset just to be upset. I'm upset because my citizens demand to have quality <coughs> services and we, we deserve to have them. Okay, I, I just want to thank you, Councilman Jones. I just want to reiterate to this committee and uh, everybody that sits at this table in my committee, in this Municipal Services Committee, let's talk about the policies and uh, procedures and um, uh, of the city government, not and, and let's refrain from politics, okay? All right, Councilman. Uh, Anthony Harris. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I'll be brief because I know we're, we're trying to move on to the next piece. I know uh, to, through the chair to Assistant Director Laird, uh, we'll, we'll receive an uh, audit of kind of where our funds are um, from this past year. Will we get that beginning of the year before we sign for a new year project clean or will that come? It probably won't come this year, will it? 
Um, to through the chair to the councilman, if you want to have one specifically for your war, we can do that. Okay. It'll take us a little time to get there. We just I, I'm not quite sure who the person is to work through. I don't know if it's Mr. James or if you have a new person in place. Me. Well, no, you're you're yeah. uh, whoever your your staff person is. Sure. Uh, thank you. Do uh, the chair if if you could I, um, at the beginning of the year or sometime next year can maybe send over uh, uh, to either the member themselves or to Ms. Tail, yep. uh, you know, kind of if, if there is balance left over sure, sure from can. what we allocated from the previous year. So then that gives us an idea based on when, when, when Mrs. Uh, when Assistant Director uh, uh, Porch sends us that letter, I'll know if I got some leftover dollars. That would be appreciated. Yep, sure okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. Chair, yeah. All, right, All right, Chairman. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Councilman Harrison. Any other questions on ordinance number uh, 11-2022? Seeing no further questions, ordinance 11 20 22 is approved. All right, ordinance number 11 17 2022 by council members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request. This is an emergency ordinance authorizing the director of public works to enter into a contract number CT. 7001 PS 2022 0223 with Rust Belt Riders Composting LLC to design and conduct a composting pilot program for waste food generated by vendors at the West Side Market. Okay, Director, this is something new, correct? To, to the chairman, yes, this is new. I have a uh, special advisor to the mayor, uh, Jessica Trusano, here to speak to this resolution and uh, a nod here from the director's office of uh, sustainability uh, to speak to it as well. Thank you, Director. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Jessica Trevisano, Senior Strategist for Westside Market. Uh, this is a sustainability effort as much as it is a Westside Market effort, so I am going to kick it over to our Department of Sustainability to answer the chair. Hold on, Ms. Trevisano. Uh, please, if, if we can all take our conversations out into the hallway. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, to answer the chair's question, yes, this is a new pilot program uh, to explore uh, composting and food recovery at Westside Market, as well as a sort of general look at how to ex uh, add composting as a residential service. Uh, but our friends at Department of Sustainability can tell us more about the specific service. Yes. Um, good morning, and uh, thank you. And through the chair to the committee, um, we are getting there close to Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thanks for mentioning that. Our uh, director, Sarah O'Keefe, is out sick today. So I, uh, Anand Natarajan, I'm representing the Mayor's Office of Sustainability in providing support to this legislative piece. Uh, thank you to Public Works. Uh, we always uh, believe in collaboration within the city. Uh, so just to provide some context, um, the Cleveland Neighborhood Progress, an entity in the city, received a grant um, a few years ago uh, to develop what is called as a circular Cleveland. Circular economy, the basic fundamental of premise of circular Cleveland and circular economy is reduce waste, reuse, and rethink how we use materials all across all sectors. Specific to this project, I just want to provide one statistic that will make it um, significant in terms of why this project is so important. The study that came out of the, uh, the foundation's report um, estimated that about 400,000 tons of food agricultural produce flows through the economy of the city of Cleveland, which is terrific, right? I think we know that there is so much work going on. This is across all sectors. Unfortunately, about 100,000 tons of food ends up in landfill, 100,000 tons. Just pause for a second, right? And only 4,000 tons gets composted. As a larger community, we can all do better, right? And so this specific project is a sub-grant from, from Cleveland Neighborhood Progress to the city of Cleveland for $60,000 to implement a, wayside, a composting pilot at the wayside market. And with that, I can allow Public Works to speak a little bit more about the project itself and what we plan to do. Sure, I can take that. Uh, so the project itself is a contract with Rust Belt Riders uh, and a couple of sub-grantees who are working with Rust Belt Riders. Uh, what they'll be doing is uh, working with vendors at Westside Market first to do a food waste audit. So they will go through and sort of identify any food that's wasted 
uh, that could be repurposed or could be donated to people in need, uh, ways to reuse that food. Uh, so there's, they'll start there working with some of their partners. Uh, then they will move on to launching a pilot program of composting some of the food waste at Westside Market, whether that's from vendors, from the restaurant, uh, or from the neighborhood. Uh, they will pilot that program uh, in the West Side Market for a couple of months, then write us a report on you know, how that could be implemented for the future of the West Side Market, and then also how uh, composting could be implemented in other parts of the city for residents. Okay, all right, are there any questions on, I got a question from, um, I'm gonna go to um, the Vice Chair, Brian Mooney. Sure, um, to the Chair, just a couple questions. So this will only, take place for one calendar year. So my question is, is this all gonna be paid for entirely with the grant? To the councilman through the chair, yes. Okay, and then from hearing you, this, there's gonna be a neighborhood component where you're gonna allow residential people in the neighborhood to participate, is that right? Yeah, to the councilman through the chair. My understanding of the what the RFP covers is there's a scope of, a part of the scope, which is sort of a small piece of this RFP, is asking uh, Rust Belt riders to also kind of describe what a residential composting program could look like. We aren't going to be piloting residential composting, but, you know, as we're, since we have this piece of funding and have Rust Belt Riders as a grantee, they've agreed to sort of describe what that could look like. Okay, so, when, so we're gonna do this for about a year till October, 20, October 31st. Will this just be, through the chair, a one-year contract that we're given to Rust Belt? To the uh, councilman through the chair, there was an RFP process. There were a couple um, different contractors who bid on that. Uh, the contract, our Rust Belt Riders was uh, the, the contractor who was selected. This is a pilot program, so we're gonna test it out, see how it works, see how um, implementable it is, uh, and then um, you know, once the grant funding runs out, we'll have to reassess from there. So I think my question was, is it a one-year contract? Yes. Okay, so moving forward, how do you anticipate funding this after the year? Yes. If it's a success, where are you gonna get the revenue from? To the to the councilman through the chair, uh, one of the you know benefits of a pilot is to kind of test the waters to make sure first that something like this is really worthwhile for uh, the city to pursue. I think from there, you know, there are grant <coughs> applications that we could look at similarly to how we received the funding here. Uh, then there's also sort of this wider conversation around the West Side Market and doing sort of a master plan and business plan for West Side Market to look at the operations. I mean, the dream scenario is that this could actually save some money at West Side Market by diverting some food waste that we would otherwise be spending money to get rid of in other ways. So to, my answer is we don't know how we would fund it, but it's a pilot to try to test it out. So are you considering general revenue funds? Or you don't know? I don't know. Okay. That's all. Those are my questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilman Mooney. Uh, Councilman Brian Casey. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, to who am I directing these to? The chief? To so if I say anybody, don't be offended, okay? No, Whoever no. can answer the question, they can, be an, can, be, can be ask the question. Okay. Yes. So aside from the fact that this kind of sort of looks like CNP is steering a sub-grant to the city of Cleveland um, by going through the third party, what I want to try to figure out here, because there's a lot within this piece of legislation, although it doesn't look like a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So originally 74018, right, was passed uh, mm -hmm. under the previous administration, mm -hmm. right? In order to receive the grant funding for 60,000 under section 354, 2021, okay? After further review of 354, 2021, which authorized the administration to go out to bid and receive mm -hmm. the grant, okay? Um, which got you into your special fund uh, for this program. But in September, on September 12th of 2022, Council under Ordinance 893, 2022, repealed ordinance number 354, 2021. Um, and now you're coming to us under the contract number, right, that you accepted under 354, that was repealed 
by the council. So the question is, Mr. Chairman, to whomever, mm -hmm. is that because we repealed the original legislation that allowed you to go out and accept the grant money, which you did, mm -hmm. right? How are we, as the legislators, mm -hmm. legally allowed to allow you the authority to expend the $60,000 when we repealed your authority to go out and accept it? The, I would, Mr. Chairman, to whomever, I would believe that we would have to go back and allow you to accept the grant dollars again before we could, because that was repealed, um, we can't allow you to expend something that the council repealed you the authority to accept. And I don't know if anybody has that answer or not, but that's <laughs> what we're seeing in front of us today. Mr. Chairman, to whomever. Yeah. Okay, do we, have a, um, do we have an explanation from law? Do you want to oh, weigh in on yeah. this? I would just want to check back with us, Stephanie Melnick, and get the time, make sure we're straight on the timeline with the order of operations there. Um, but in the, I don't know that the, I mean, I don't want to opine out loud in the, the legal advice in the public meeting, but I can follow back up with you uh, after the end of the meeting. It, it shouldn't I don't know if we have the authority to pass this or not. Okay, Councilman uh, Casey, are you? Are you I, I, I'm, I'm just, Mr. Chairman, I'm just wondering if we have the authority to allow the administration to expend dollars that we um, have repealed and not allowed them to accept. To the, uh, accept I, yeah, th the that's, 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 that's the other question. I know you've already accepted it, but you've accepted dollars that the council has repealed you the authority to do. Uh, to the chair, to the council, and certainly we should uh, check back on the timing with the law. Um, I, I would have a question in terms of what the repeal meant. The repeal meant was going forward. We don't have the authority to apply, accept, and spend dollars in a similar fashion. Well, whatever was accepted, my understanding from law, when we were writing the contract, is that was already in place. So we had already had the authority to apply and accept under a certain ordinance, yes. My understanding of the repeal is, going forward, the Office of Sustainability does not have any additional authority to apply and accept grants and spend dollars over 50000 That is why we are in front of you today to do the second half, which is the expend authority of a contract. And we can change the contract number if it has to be changed. But the idea behind this piece today is to expend the second half of that portion because it is over $50,000. We are here in front of you. I, I understand. My understanding is when you do a repeal, it is not going retroactively and removing everything that the office did years ago. Okay, so. I, and I understand, Mr. Chairman. All it says in the legislation in front of us today is that under the authority of Ordinance 354, mm -hmm. the Director of Public Works applied for and accepted $60,000 in the grant, Correct. right? And then on September 12th, mm -hmm. Council repealed ordinance 354 under 354, therefore removing the underlying ordinance authority to enter into the contract. It's my opinion, and again, I think we should all get a legal opinion on this, is that at this moment, I don't know if we have the authority, I don't know if you had the authority to accept it to begin with because we repealed the legislation, and if you did, that, that's great because we don't want to throw grant dollars down the way, yes. but I don't know if we have the authority to give you something to expend where we repealed mm -hmm. your ability to do that. And I understand why that piece of, I remember why that yes. piece of legislation was repealed. It's because you guys had the whole world thrown into that piece of legislation. And I'm just not sure, Mr. Chairman, if at this point we shouldn't put, a, put the brakes on until we get a legal opinion or if this has to be amended to go back and accept, to be able to accept those grant dollars and expend it in one piece of legislation as opposed to three or four different pieces of legislation that are in front of me today. Just my opinion, but you're the chairman. Right. You okay. Director, you, you want to... You, anybody have a comment on that? Uh, I, I will just make a comment, but certainly we would have to defer to law, as our uh, legal advice would say, to, to be definitive. I feel that this authority is the reason why we are here, to expend the dollars and with a, asking for a new authority, and hence we are here today, to be able to expend the dollars that were already accepted through a previous authority. That's my perception. I'm not a legal expert. And I'm, I'm not going to argue, yeah. but it's under a yeah. previous authority that was repealed. 
Okay, but I, again, Mr. Chairman. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. To the councilman, okay. through the chair, uh, when we spoke to the, we spoke to Kevin Roberts in the, the law department, he, his view at the time, and I can ask him to uh, kind of come and clarify, was that the ability to accept, you know, the donation was, or the grant was accepted under the previous piece of legislation, and that we're at the table here today requesting approval to expend those funds. Um, so perhaps, it, perhaps it's a way with how the legislation is worded, but that was sort of the context of the background of where we were at. Okay, do we have a comment from the law department? Uh, I would need to take a look at Ordinance 893-2022. Okay, all right, uh, until that time, we are gonna hold Ordinance number 1117-2022 until, until we get some further clarification, okay? All right, is there any other questions on ordinance number 1117-2022? All right, all right, director, we're gonna hold this piece until, until we get further clarification. All right, is that all your legislation, director? Yes, sir. All right, I hear about, oh, okay, all right, yeah, I'm sorry. We, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Trevisano, thank you. Uh, we will open this up for miscellaneous. We need to talk to the director about the uh, uh, miscellaneous. Um, I have a couple questions about, uh, director, you want to give us a brief um, summary about how the LEAF, um, the restarted LEAF program is going? Uh, to the chairman uh, to the rest, and to the rest of the council, uh, this LEAF program has uh, kicked off and has been progressing pretty nicely. We did have to uh, suspend the LEAF program due to snow and ice control efforts uh, over the weekend. Uh, it's our hope that we should be back on the LEAF program uh, this afternoon after we finish cleaning up everything from the snow and ice control event from this weekend. Okay, um, also, um, <coughs> while, I, while I have you here, director, the uh, speed signs that we had ordered through the council. Um, can you can you uh, talk about that? Do you know anything about that? Uh, through the chair to the councilman, uh, uh, or through the chair to the chair. <laughs> uh, we are uh, receiving those in as we speak. Uh, some of those were due in last week. Uh, the remaining ones that we were, that were in, uh, we have been uh, calculating and getting data from the speed tables and signage that we have out. Uh, I do believe that the first uh, turn of those, I think they're lasting you know, a few days in each location. Uh, I think they just got moved last week was the first move from the ones that were already in place. Uh, but so far we've, we've been getting great feedback from residents uh, from the location. That we so, so, far. so now the ones that was allocated to the districts are those the ones that that was moved, or was those the one, or, or the ones that the council had allocated and paid for? Was those installed and moved? Also? Some, all of those have not come in yet. So they are, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, some of those came in last week and they'll be uh, put up in this week's. Because the reason why I'm asking is because mm -hmm. I noticed a speed sign in my ward this morning uh, mm -hmm. that I didn't see. I didn't know if it was there last week. Um, that's on Turney Road. And I was wondering, was that one of my signs that I actually paid for? Uh, or is that one of the district signs? I'll confirm that to you. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm gonna go to Bri Councilman Brian Casey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, to the director, can you just send council over um, a list of what subsections has been already, have already been picked up with leaves and which ones have yet to get their first pass through because- Of the high generation areas. You, you Right. Right. Yeah. Of the, That's uh, correct. What, what's, yeah. Keep, keep in mind, we've okay. only been in a, a week. We started a week late due to the... I understand why you started a week late. Okay. Um, but if we, could, if we could get a list of what's already been done, um, because there's supposed to be two pass-throughs, correct? That's correct. Okay. So if we could get a list of what subsections are... Because they're broken out in subsections, correct? They're broken out in high generation leaf areas. Okay, oh, that's right. So if you could give us a list of what high generation leaf areas have already been done, um, that would be greatly appreciated. And then you guys are have until, according to your schedule, January 3rd to have these leaves picked up by, correct? Th that's correct. We, we will, uh, weather dependent, we will continue working as, as much as we can throughout the uh, season. Oh, by then you're going to be working through the snow, but... I just want to make sure that we are able to at least get one pass through to the high generation areas before 
our next major snowstorm. I mean, I, I assume that's your goal too, Absolutely. but there's parts of the city that have just got mounds and mounds of leaves sitting on their tree lawns and no signs in sight. So if we could just provide us with an update on that, we'd appreciate it. To the, to the uh, chair, to the councilman, we can get that done for you. Thank you. All right, Councilman Brian Mooney. Yeah, just briefly, so we're still using the cardboard signs on all the streets in the leaf generation areas to give them some notice that they're going to be coming. Is that right? To the chair, to the councilman, that's correct. Oh, and then we're, we're trying to get two passes, but realistically, we only, we only get one. But two is the goal. Two is the goal, uh, just weather dependent, of course. Right. Thank you. All right, any other questions from miscellaneous? All right, seeing no further questions, the MSP committee is hereby adjourned. Mrs. Jones received her call at 8 a.m. Uh, press one and she is okay. And that way we know that she's doing just fine right now. Okay, so what if the call comes in and repeatedly is not answered? Sure. Uh, how many times does it call you though? Yeah, so it'll call you five times total. So it'll wait five minutes. So if you miss the eight o'clock call, it'll call 8.05, 8.10, 8.15, 8.20, 8.25. It'll call you that series of times Again, best case scenario is you pick up, but let's assume you don't though. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, what happens is after your calls have ran, so it's about 8.25, 8.26 now, uh, it'll send a message back to our staff in the office saying Ms. Jones did not answer her call. Uh, that is the trigger now where our staff get into action. Uh, we do have a person behind the program, a, a real live person behind the call, mm -hmm. uh, who will then see that and then will begin calling uh, Mrs. Jones herself. You know, maybe Mrs. Jones was uh, in the restroom or she was out of the home at the time. Um, so uh, that gives the senior another chance to answer. If they continue to not answer, that's when we call their contact person. One of the stipulations for being on the program is that you need to have a contact person. Uh, this gives us the ability to call hopefully a family member, a trusted neighbor or friend mm -hmm. who might know a little bit more about you and where, where you are and what you're doing that day. And that gives us a chance to maybe say, oh, you know, she's just grocery shopping right now. Or I saw her this morning, she was going to the doctor's office. Okay. Uh, and then that's our trigger, you know, oh, okay, she is okay today. She's out taking care of her business. That's great. That, that's, that's a great outcome for us still. Going further, what if all avenues are exhausted? You can't get a hold of anyone, not, not even the emergency contact. Mm -hmm. What happens then? We will continue to make calls for a little period of time. Um, assuming no answers, though, we will send out staff to the home. Okay. Uh, we do have staff on hand who will actually go out uh, to the individual's home, to Mrs. Jones's home in this case, and knock on her door, knock on the windows. Mm -hmm. Do we hear anything? Are there? Are, we look for signs. Mm -hmm. Is there mail piled up? Is there a uh, TV playing? Is there any indication that maybe the home has been empty for a while? Or is there any indication that maybe someone's in there but just not responsive? Mm -hmm. We will look for all those signs. Uh, and then let's assume that we still can't get a hold of her when we're out there. We'll call the police. Mm -hmm. uh, police, oftentimes we find people will answer the door for police when they won't answer it for somebody else. <laughs> Uh, that's just the truth of it, though. Uh, and let's assume that the police still can't get in. EMS, fire can come out as well. Okay. Uh, and we actually have broken down doors, uh, broken in windows to get to somebody, uh, and found someone you know, lying there uh, indisposed one way or another. Uh, and that's the real value in the program right there, uh, where we uh, can jump into action um, and reach someone who is not well or not responsive. Are there any then safeguards in place? So let's say the person went on vacation. Mm -hmm. How can they affect that? Do they call? The, how does that work? Yeah, it, the, the 